On my right, I have my left-handed bag, which I'm trying to break 80 at least once with. And on my left, I have a load of hand-me-downs, downgrade. Someone that isn't using them anymore and they've upgraded their bags themselves, which I've purchased. The question is, what am I taking from that and putting in that? Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon down here at Lower Hennick Driving Range. Before I get into someone else's downgrade, upgrading my bag, I do want to say thank you for the 30,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Um, I did do a giveaway for 30,000, which I was going to build three Vega 3 irons. I've contacted the winners, and um, they're going to get in touch with me, and then I'll probably do a video on building those three different irons um, and how they actually turn out, as well as Rob Moore, you're the gentleman that actually won. And um, the Cleveland, that was gifted to the channel by Damien, which is amazing to think someone else that has no use for a set of clubs just gifting away to someone else that potentially needs them and it's going to help them in the bag. So Rob, congratulations and Damien, thank you. You are a ledge. Right, let me show you what I've bought. Give them a hit. Upgrade that bad boy. So the gentleman named as Luke got in touch with me about a couple of weeks ago and said, Simon, I've got loads of left-handed gear that I want to sell. Um, can you make me an offer? And I did, and he accepted, and I got these all collected. And some of them potentially I'm going to try and sell and move on, but the majority is actually going in that because that is not looking very beginner friendly and I kind of made it that way because I think as a beginner you should try and make it a bit harder for yourself try and get the technique down try and learn what works for you what doesn't work for you however it's looking a bit scarce and we need to start shooting some half decent scores if we're ever going to try and be 80 left-handed by February otherwise I have to donate a thousand pounds to charity that is the goal that is the plan and I need to start getting down the golf course so we need to load the bag with a lot more woods higher end as well as that little beauty on the corner there that should save me quite a few shots so this is probably going to be quite self-explanatory for a lot of the bag i.e there's a lot missing but i'm going to try and dissect or go into why some of these woods are better for me at 24 to 26 handicap i'm going to say at the moment better than others because some are geared more to a lower handicapper some are geared to more of a high handicapper and that still goes for today with brand new clubs callaway tightless mizuno tailor-made whatever they bring out the good player range they bring out the forgiveness range and you've really got to kind of decipher work out what's going to be better for you not only now but in the future i see too many people go and get custom fitted for two grand set of golf clubs only to outgrow that within three months after they've had a couple of lessons so it's quite important to note that i've got quite a lot of woods but then i haven't got a lot of woods in there so that really needs to be upgraded three iron well drivers at the top of the bag then three iron i'll talk about why the driver's going to stay in because i've got another driver that potentially could replace it um, and then i'm down to a three iron four iron there's a massive gap there especially for someone at the moment that kind of needs some fairway finders 180 200 yard shots that just go like that way that is vital so in my left hand i have my current driver which is a tailor-made m4 which i built probably about five six months ago i bought the head for 80 pounds brand new you can see how steep i am getting into the ball at the moment with the driver still i'll get into that in a second but i bought the driver head for 80 pounds brand new which is an absolute steal um and i put an extra stiff shaft in it that i just had lying about now you might be saying, Simon, why have you got an extra stiff shaft in the club? And that is a very good point. And I say this to a lot of people that start the game. The shaft, realistically, if you're not breaking 100 consistently, <laughs> doesn't make that much difference. Like your club face being open 20 degrees impact or closed at 20 degrees uh, impact in accordance to like the target is the main thing and yes the driver shaft is going to make a difference but just not that much and when i have guys going simon this just feels too whippy for me or simon it feels too heavy or too stiff whatever it's not your major problem so i do have a stiff flex nike vr driver in my hands which on paper for me at the moment would be better however there's a few reasons why i'm not putting this in the bag number one 
This is geared to hit a long, low spinning, high launching ball because all the weight is at the front. You'll see this with a lot of drivers. Any driver where the weight's here, that is for a low handicap golfer. Any weight that's at the back here, like your Sim Max, your Ping G400 Max, whatever it might be, that is designed for your high handicapper. The M4 is designed for your high handicapper, or more forgiveness. It's not even designed for your high handicapper, it's just more forgiving um, on those bad shots. And overall, it's the head that I'm more worried about. Now, I could go and get a reg or stiff flex shaft to go in this driver. And over the next two, three months, that probably would help me out. However, my swing speed's gonna keep increasing. I like the feeling of a heavy shaft. I've always played X stiff anyway, and I have a good idea of where the head is, even though my left hand swing's nowhere near where it should be. But that's the theory of why this is staying in the bag. Yes, I need to give it a clean. Um, that's why this is staying in the bag, because overall it's my technique that's letting me down. As you can see, way too steep. Club face is way too open. Yes, the shaft could help with that, but we're talking like 10, 20%, whereas I need 100% or 80% of club face change, which is all technique based. Love the look of the covert driver though. It's just not getting in the bag. Moving on to the fairway woods, because obviously I've got no fairway woods in the bag. It's gonna be quite easy. Some of these are going in. R11S, 910 five wood and a 913 three wood. Which ones am I gonna be putting in? I love the look of our R11S, and to be honest, a lot of the time, especially if you're starting the game, just pick clubs you like the look of. Like, yes, there's some science behind it. Yes, different heads make different things, whatever. But if you're confident standing over a pin club or a tailor-made club or Mizuno, whatever it might be, I'd rather you just go down that route because confidence and aesthetics and the idea that you're actually gonna hit the ball a long way or you can visualize yourself hitting the ball a long way with that club, speaks dividends compared to the actual numbers base and again that is if you're starting the game however this is not going in the bag for the same reason as the night driver too low spinning yes i'm going to catch this and it's going to go an absolute mile however would i be able to hit this off the ground i personally don't think i'm going to be able to hit this off the ground as well as the other two mainly because a lot of the center of gravity i.e weight is kind of geared towards the front of the face hence why it goes such a long way when you do catch it so that's out which leaves me with both the tightless fairway woods. And you might be going, Simon, it's an easy choice. The 913 is the more upgraded model. These are great buys, by the way. If you haven't got any woods at all, I highly suggest going 913, 910, 915, because for whatever reason, they just didn't do that well. Um, and the market is flooded with them. And you can probably pick up I'll have to give you the prices exactly on all these clubs, by the way. But you can probably pick these up for like £40, £50 each. However, this is a 19 degree wood and this is a 15 degree wood. This, on average, if I was to hit 100 balls, I would probably hit this one further than this one currently. Mainly because, as you saw with the driver, my swing is very steep at the moment, just like the majority of beginner golfers. Therefore, I need the loft. If you've got a wood or club in the bag where you go, Simon, I flush my five wood but can't hit my three wood, it's because you are too steep. This might be 19 degrees on the bottom of it, but let's be honest, when I'm hitting the golf ball, it's probably 13 to 12 degrees. That means that if I was to do the same with this, all of a sudden that wood is now five to six degrees, not enough loft, just not getting up in the air. However, this is still going in the bag because as my game progresses, the three wood potentially is gonna come into its own, maybe long par fives. Hopefully we can get to the stage where we get into par fives in two. This, I feel, even though I haven't hit it, I'm gonna show you hitting all of these clubs anyway, but even though I haven't hit this, I can guarantee you I'd probably get this club going further on average than this. Yes, one good shot off a tee might go a mile with this, but on average, and that's all this game is, averages, it's gonna be a lot better. I hope that makes a lot of sense, and I hope you can use that information to help your game out as well. There's a reason why I suggest five woods to the majority of golfers nowadays rather than a three wood. Yes, if you're a Cat 1 golfer and you hit it a mile, three was probably going to be your better club. But for the majority of people that sign this game, five would all the way. Anyway, both of those in the bag. Then we move on to the hybrid section. As I said, I've only got a three iron and like a three iron blade, which, and the three iron and four iron are pretty much pointless in the bag. Like very rarely am I gonna be taking those out at the moment, mainly because if I've got 160 yards to the flag, I'm just gonna just try and hit a five iron. Even if I had 180, I'd probably just hit a five iron at the moment until these have now turned up. On my right, we've got an Adams Golf 
idea, more like a driving iron, very similar to like the TaylorMade Gapper range that came out this year, quite similar to any small back to front hybrids that you see out there and Adams make great hybrids. They just don't get talked about. This is pretty much next to nothing. Like, if you were to sell this, you're gonna get 25 pounds, maybe 30 pounds, because no one knows about it. It should be worth 60 pounds. It's a great looking club, very sharp, great for those kind of tight fairways, especially if you live in a hot country, um, and a good fairway finder all round. But it's not going in my bag. Again, 18 degrees, and realistically, doesn't kind of matter what the club is that's kind of the same loft as my five foot so why would i have two clubs in the bag that do the same thing and my five foot is going to be more forgiving because again the weight is back here because it's bigger this is designed for hitting stingers controlling shots links golf etc and to be honest my swing is not good enough to use this so that is not going in the bag this JPX is 850. JPX 854 hybrid, however, 22 degrees definitely is. Hybrids are great for beginner golfers because of the length, ladies and gentlemen. The reason you struggle to hit your woods, your driver, is because it's four inches longer than the majority of your clubs. You're like, Simon, I'm great with my seven iron, can't hit my driver. The club's so long and so less lofted, no wonder you can't hit it. For hybrid, this is going to be my staple. Great value club, again, we're talking like next to nothing. Let me get the rain off the lens, that's better. Um, uh, next to nothing, for whatever reason, uh, the JPX hybrids or Mizuno Woods in general just don't do that well. Like I saw the JT, um, JT, the GT or the ST, 180s, 190s, they're going next to nothing. You can pick up like a full set of woods for 200 pounds in great condition. I believe the blue wasn't to everyone's cup of tea, so they're not for everyone. But the technology, the feel, the forgiveness, Mizuno, yes, they make arguably, especially in this part of the world, the best irons that you can get fitted for. Woods, however, just haven't got the same appeal and not many people like the feel or sound or just the general aesthetics. And I said that at the start, aesthetics is key. I think they made a great choice making their whole range black. Everyone likes black. JPX 850 hybrid, four hybrid, Regflex is it? Should have checked. Stiff flex. Um, and again, this is gonna be my go-to club at the moment. Like par threes, I'm probably gonna hit it, um, depending if it's like 150, 160 yards plus. Um, uh, fairways, I'm gonna be hitting it. Tight tee shots, I'm gonna be hitting it. Mainly because, just like I said with the five wood, it's got more loft. I'm more likely on average to hit this a longer distance than my three wood. Because the three wood's gonna give me a shank and it's gonna give me a top and it's gonna give me a 40 yarder. Yes, I might get a 220 out of it, but it's just not worth the risk. Not where I'm at the part of the game. Again, the bag's gonna change as I get better left-handed. But the four hybrid, I'll give you some prices what you can get this for at the moment. It's just a must for me. This club here is gonna save me four shots over 18 holes, there's no question. The driver, if I was to change that, probably wouldn't save me that many shots, even if it was custom fitted for me. If I was custom fitted for a driver, 450 pounds, how many shots at my level is that gonna save me around? Who knows? This, however, is worth its weight in gold. And then finally, we move on to the lower end of the bag. Now, you might have seen me make a video a couple of weeks ago about my wedges, and I got sent this Ping at Tour Gourd wedge, and to be honest, it's probably a better wedge. However, I've got three wedges in the bag at the moment those rams that cost me 45 pounds which is like the unbelievable value and my wedge game isn't good enough to make a change to it at the moment so yes it's probably a better wedge probably a better feel better shaft better grip whatever again is it going to make that much difference to my wedge game at the moment no because i know the technique i know what a good wedge shot feels like now and when you get better at this game you'll have the same understanding so i'll probably go and get fitted for my wedges when that comes to it, if need be. If I was gonna get feared for anything in this challenge, it's gonna be wedges and it's gonna be my putter. The rest of the game, I can pretty much just work out just from know-how and experience. But at the moment, you could put a 300 pound wedge. Let's go Sugar Daddy, PXG. You could put a 400 pound wedge in my hand and it wouldn't make the slightest bit of difference. 
This is what I'm using currently at the moment, and I imagine a lot of you are already cringing from the videos that I've already put with this, but Dwayne, thank you first of all. This was a putter that he got back, back in the day out of a magazine, and he used this, and he gifted it to me when this challenge first started, his member up at Burford, so thank you to him, and it served a purpose. My putting, actually, if you watch any of the vlogs of me playing left-handed, is actually been the best part of the game. However, Luke, the legend, I use legend a lot, should probably start using it because I'm diluting its meaning. Had a left-handed ping, uh, I'm constantly battling with the water here, Candence TR Putter. And the reason I love this is because it's got a big head. Now, you know about mallet putters. And to be honest, I'd probably suggest a mallet putter for 90% of golfers that pick up this game because it's more forgiving, i.e. the bigger the club, I mean, it's kind of getting boring now, but the bigger the club, the more forgiving it is. If I hit the putt or the ball, let's say there or there or there, it's gonna kind of come off the same kind of direction. Whereas a blade putter, just like blades in general, you need the feel, you need to know when you've hit a bad one, you work on your technique. This, on longer putts, forgiveness, is just gonna be more forgiving. Again, it's gonna save me shots out on the golf course, especially the longer putts. I'm not saying it's making my pet, put, petting, my putting technique any better. Far from it. If anything, I'm going to lose some feel. But with a thicker grip, which I love, and higher MOI because of the head, it's going to help my golf game. And it'd be stupid for me not to put it in the bag at this point. So let's add up the price of my upgrades to the bag. That potentially, hopefully, I've justified now how many shots they're going to save me on the golf course. I've got the two woods, which to be honest is probably about 70 pounds. I'm gonna say 30 pounds for the 910 five wood, which realistically I'd probably pay more for than the three wood, but the three wood's newer. So it's gonna go for more. So I'm going 40 pounds on the three wood, and I'm going 30 pounds on the five wood, which is 70 pounds, which you could potentially buy these for right-handed, left-handed. I've got the ping at Candence Putter, which I'm gonna go Again, I'm trying to give you quite reasonable prices with all of these, or quite realistic, I should say. I'm going to say £45. I think you could probably get this a lot cheaper, but £45 for that. So we've got £70, £45, £115. And because Mizuno Woods, for whatever reason, just don't sell that well, um, I'm going to say again about... I mean, you could probably get someone to sell this to you for £30, but I'm going to say £40 again. So, £155 total putter, two woods and a hybrid to upgrade my bag. And I estimate that would probably, all these clubs, is going to save me four shots around, comfortably. So all of a sudden I've gone for let's say a 26, 28 handicapper to a 22, 24 handicapper. When I hit a good one, it goes just as well as my right-handed game. However, it's the bad shots that are killing me at the moment, and that's the majority of my coaching is spent around saving someone's bad shots. They're good shots, great. And the majority of you can hit a great shot. It's the bad shots. It's the ones that are like over there in the car park, or that one on the main road, are the ones that kill your game. And for 155 pounds, which let's be honest, can be the cost of one iron in today's market, and one iron definitely isn't gonna improve your game, I think that was a great purchase. And here she is in all her glory. A lot more head covers in the bag, which always makes it look a lot better and a lot cleaner. However, for the ones that are very observant of you, we need to now take some clubs out. Because I think we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We've got 17 clubs in the bag, which means I need to get rid of three clubs. Which ones am I taking out? Hopefully this is gonna be obvious to a lot of you. A few of them might not make sense, but I'm going to try and clarify it now. Three iron and four iron, mainly because I'm going to upgrade all of these. I'm not going to get a four iron in my new set of irons, but whatever I choose, it's going to be five um, uh, to pitch and wedge, mainly because five irons, when I do get it de-lofted, I think the five iron would actually be quite a good match to that four hybrid. So this three and four is actually a very easy take out. This is how many clubs I've got in the pack. It's not actually... Okay, we wrestled them out. Three and four are now out, which leaves me one more club to get rid of. This is the club I'm getting rid of. That sand iron right there. I've already got three wedges in the bag, which to be honest, is potentially too many already. But this pitching wedge, True lofted, I haven't lofted and lied it, should be 48 degrees, then I've got 52, then a 56, and then a 60. Just makes good sense in gapping. I don't think I'm gonna miss the sand iron at all. And then the rest of the bag, 
kind of now makes sense and also the clubs can somewhat fit in let me just rearrange it a bit let's price up exactly what this costs driver 80 pounds for the brand new head which arguably i didn't really need to spend but it looked cool and it was a good deal shaft to go in it back in there 200 odd pounds i paid for it nowadays you can get that shaft for about 50 to 60 pounds so i'm going to say 60 140 pounds for my driver 40 pounds for the hybrid so we're now at 180 the woods together 70 so that's 250 irons i think i paid 50 pounds for the total set just because of how old they are uh, and no one's ever going to want them so now we're up to 300 45 for the wedges set so that's 345 and then the putter 45 pounds now if you give and take we're still under 400 pounds for my entire set of clubs and i can guarantee you if i was to spend any more money it's not going to improve my game at this point as a 24 handicapper yes if you're off eight yes if you're off 10 potentially if you're off 16 get a club fit but if you've only been playing this game less than a year this is what your bag should look like and if i was to sell this bag tomorrow i would sell it for 400 pounds i.e I've saved on not losing money. I could sell this bag in two years' time for £300. Does that make sense? You're just not losing money. Whereas if you buy a brand new club and you hit it, you've lost 60% of its value right then and there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Luke, thank you again um, for giving me the opportunity to buy those clubs because left-handed clubs are quite difficult to source. Now, I'm not saying they're expensive, I'm not saying they're cheap they're just as hard to buy as they are to sell so you have to be in the right place at the right time but the bag now looks really good and i'm excited to go and play a lot more golf now as a pga pro you can play golf courses for free you ring up the pro there and you ask for courtesy but you can't really play there more than once a year um uh, so that being said i need to join somewhere as a member i don't know where i'm going to join at the moment because they need to be happy with me to film obviously i don't want to get in people's way but if i'm going to realistically break 80 by feb I can't practice all here because unfortunately you don't play golf here you play golf on a golf course and that's really important so I need to start getting out and practicing more golf on the golf course I well also I actually just want to go and play more golf in general um, uh, but at the same time that's going to really help my golf game guys thank you first of all for 30k subs thank you for the support on the channel just thanks I appreciate it right see you later